Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe, and for today's episode, I'm going to start with a story about four teenage boys who have been hailed as heroes. So these four boys were surfing some waves um, at Trinidad State Beach in California for several hours when they decided to take a break. So it is obviously colder months and the water that they're sitting in is freezing, right? So they're relaxing, sitting on their boards in the freezing cold water, just the same. And they heard cries for help. But since the weather was, it was really foggy, it was a cold evening. So they actually had to push their way through the mist in order to locate the yelling. um, Where they found two swimmers splashing around in the ocean with their heads just barely above the water and they they were about a hundred feet away so out of the four boys out of the four the teenage boys that heard the yelling uh two of them had been in junior lifeguard training and they knew that the two victims obviously didn't have too long until hypothermia would affect them badly enough where they would not be able to swim on their own at all so these four boys were very quick to think and jump to action. Uh, they acted right in the exact way that they should have. One of them headed back to shore to call 911 when the other three paddled over and helped the swimmers uh, that were struggling. So the two swimmers that were struggling were two young boys uh, that were 15 and 20 years old. They were brothers. And they were not wearing the appropriate swimwear for the chilly waters and that chilly day. Um, I guess they were just playing around in the surf and got carried away by the strong current. So their family was actually on the beach, but the beach was so foggy that their family was not able to see them through the mist. So these boys were really struggling to get on the surfboards. Um, The three young teens that helped them up were struggling for quite a long time to get them up. I guess, of course, when you're feel like you're drowning you're freaking out so these boys had to calm them down um try to get them as unscared as they could possibly could and i guess it was extremely difficult because particularly one of the boys reportedly weighed around 250 pounds and can you imagine being a young teen boy trying to lift that onto a surfboard you know that's a lot of weight to lift up onto a surfboard especially when you're panicking but they did do it. They were able to get them to the shore. Um, and then being out in those waters without a wet, without a wetsuit is like taking an ice bath. So of course, these two boys that were struggling were absolutely freezing. Uh, the paramedics did come and look at them, of course, and help them out. But if it wasn't for these four boys that were just catching some waves on the beach, these two might have passed away. They might not have made it. So yes, these 14 boys are being hailed as heroes for being quick on their feet and knowing exactly what to do. So yeah, I just thought that was a cool little story about 14 boys who really were quick to jump and did the right thing and probably saved these two brothers' lives. Since we are on the train of talking about four kids at a time doing an amazing amazing things well my next story is going to kill any negative thoughts that you might have about generation z um i find that a lot of people look at generation z and the kids that they're obsessed with their cell phones and social media they just tend to have a bad rep but these next four kids that i'm going to talk about um they're going to bring a whole new light and killing and kill that stereotype 
So all four of these next few people I'm going to talk about are featured on CNN Young Wonders, which is a hero special, and they're recognized during CNN Heroes and All-Star Tribute. So those are two pretty big recognizations. So let's start with Grace Callwood. So Grace was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I'm probably saying that wrong. But it's a type of blood cancer, at the, and she was diagnosed with this at the age of seven. So she spent the next three years of her life undergoing treatment. She was very sick. But this young girl stayed very positive and happy throughout her entire journey. Despite losing a lot of her childhood to illness and recovery, she was always happy and positive and trying to look on the brighter side of things. Uh, She tried to create happy memories and make the most out of the situation that she had. And she just wanted to do that for others, uh, specifically other kids. So in 2012, she started the We Can't Serve movement, which is a nonprofit that brings happiness and fun to children in hospitals, homeless shelters, and foster care in and around Maryland, actually. Um, so she runs the organization with the help of her board advisors who you will not believe uh, they are her board advisors are all between ages 10 and 17 years old grace is now 15 so this group started out by simply providing baskets of toys treats other fun items to hospitalized children but since then it has completely expanded there's a lot more going on they actually have created a summer camp now for homeless children and a boutique that provides a fun shopping experience for teen girls in foster care which i think is two pretty cool unique th- unique things to help out uh this young girls organization has helped over 20,000 children at 15 years old and she's helped 20,000 children all on her own with of course her young board advisors i think it's pretty cool that a bunch of young kids came together and have been making such a big difference so now the next one i'm going to talk about is jamama browning so she is a swimmer and she swam competitively throughout her teen years she absolutely fell in love with the sport it's what she grew up doing she absolutely loved it spent all of her time But she realized that her young brother, who has Down syndrome, didn't have the same opportunities as she did. So now she is 18 years old, but she created the Taskcaster Stingrays, which is an inclusive swim squad for young people with intellectual and development disabilities. So it's it's kids between 11 and 18, and they train with their friends. They even actually compete with this squad, and they just get to experience the feelings of being on a team and being coached. And believe it or not, some of these swimmers have now been recognized into the mainstream squad for additional training. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, She fell in love with the sport and wanted to share that with absolutely everybody. Uh, Now, Bradley Ferguson grew up in Atlantic City where he learned about the economic impact on his community after a few casinos in his town closed. Um, He became aware of homelessness and food insecurity that people in his community were suffering with. So all the way back in 2014, Bradley wanted to help local veterans. That was his goal. So that's when he took his action plan and talked with his seventh grade teacher at the time. Her name is Mary Ann Devine, who created a service project to help nearby American Legion Post in New Jersey. But that needed repair. So that is when Post Crashers was born. So Bradley and dozens of his friends, they're all students, volunteer to work there. So after some time, this young group have renovated the post. They have even built a victory garden in the backyard where the young volunteers harvest fresh produce for the community. And Bradley is now 18 years old and his group and him, they prep and serve meals for the veterans living in transitional housing. So now to sum up this amazing young boy, he has raised thousands of dollars in grant money, donated count, he's donated countless meals to veterans and begged lunches for local shelters. Pretty freaking cool. Uh, now my next one, last but not least, his name is Jekyll Jackson. This young boy started giving back to his community at a very, very young age. When he was just five years old, he was distributing food to the homeless in Chicago with his aunt and cousins. Uh, Obviously, at five, he is such a young age, but he was impacted by seeing people on the streets in his community, and he wanted to find a way to help him. So, at the age of eight, 
he started Project I Am. So Project I Am is a nonprofit organization where did they distribute bags filled with hygiene products and other necessary items for people's everyday life. Uh, Jack Heal likes to call them blessing bags, which is so cute. Uh, they assembled, they are assembled by him and the help of his community members and young volunteers. So in the last three years, he's given more than 30,000 of these blessing bags out. With this little man's effort, he even got to meet the president. President Obama tweeted about him back in 2017 and not too long after they actually met. So that's pretty cool, being so young and meeting the president because of his efforts for his community and the world. That is so cool. So that sums up the four kids that I wanted to talk about that are being recognized on some pretty big platforms with CNN. Uh, It's so cool to see young kids really doing what they can for their community and the world and taking initiative at such a young age. So, yes, it is time for a break now, but when we get back, I have some stories uh, talking about homelessness, and they are definitely feel-good stories. So, stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere where you find podcasts just type gsmc in the search bar back to GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Like I said before the break, I have some very touching stories about homelessness that I think will really touch your heart. So my first one is actually about a 77-year-old couple who were homeless. This Louisiana couple were homeless for months. Uh, at 77 years old and now they want to thank social media and the kindness of people in their community for helping them out so let me give you a little bit of a backstory uh Saley molina posted a video online of her car heading to a burger king in kenner which is uh in new orleans or near new orleans um, but she was not going for food she wanted to see with her own eyes if what she heard was true And it did. It turned out to be true that two 77-year-olds were homeless on the street. The gentleman was even on a walker. So they had no shelter, barely any clothes, uh, struggling to live in a city that they just truly loved. I guess that they did look for apartments, but they just couldn't afford any uh, in this time. So six months, they were sleeping on the cement and hungry at 77 years old. It just blows my mind. Um... After months of praying, neighbors, which the couple likes to call a group of angels, came through to help them, and Saley being one of them. So the group uh, all live near Kenner, and they use social media to talk about what's going on in the community and leave it to the power of social media because all it took was a Facebook post for some people in the community to come together and help this couple out immediately people jumped on it saying what do we need do we need a hotel room clothes food what is it let's all jump in this together and help this couple out so it ended up being the city ended up providing the couple with temporary housing others donated food and clothing shoes whatever they needed other hygiene personal uh products that they need The house that was provided to them by the city, they only have for about a month. So they are still searching for something that is affordable in the area. Uh, Saley said to find affordable housing on an income that's limited, that's on disability, that's wheelchair accessible or handicap accessible is very, very difficult. But this couple have faith that their forever home will come just in time 
But until then, they're just so grateful for their new Kenner family. Uh, everyone made the couple feel very happy, and they felt a sense of family with this community. I just think that is so sweet for everyone. You know, it truly is the power of social media. One simple Facebook post or whatever it is, Instagram post, can really get people into action. It's crazy how we can do that at the tip of our fingers just by typing something on our phone or on our computer. And all of a sudden, a community comes together to help people in need. I do have another story that touches on homelessness, but it is a very sweet story for you. Um, So maybe you have heard of Nomad Donuts in the North Park, San Diego. Owners Brad Kyler and his surfing buddy Cameron Corley own this donut shop. They opened it about five years ago and nearly a thousand people have written reviews um, about the shop on Yelp. Most of the comments have been very positive, but of course there is always a little bit of negative comments on things and there was one negative comment that was one star and it triggered Brad to have a big hearted response about five days later after the comment was posted. Uh, the review has now been removed, but basically it came down on Nomad, the donut shop, for allowing a homeless man to set up camp along the shop's wall on the west side for the past year, which, quote the review, it says, really makes me feel great about spending $5 on a jelly donut. I don't have the rest of the review because it was deleted, but... Brad thought about that comment for a few days before responding. He really let it sink in and really took the time to think about it and how to respond properly. So on Yelp, you can either respond publicly or privately to the person that left a review. But Brad decided to do it publicly, and it's actually gotten a lot of attention. It has completely blown up on social media, Um, of course, like everything these days. But the blow up on social media has really made a difference. So he wanted his customers and his employees to know that his homeless customers, like the one that is camped outside, his name is Ray Taylor, um, he wanted them to know that his homeless customers deserve the same respect as everyone else in North Park. So this is what he wrote. I understand how you feel, and it's not easy to look at. I know I probably lose some business, possibly yours as well, because of my choice not to chase him away. But I won't. He's not looking for handouts, and he tries not to bother anyone. If you stop and talk to him, maybe you'll come to like him too. Uh, People began to share his response, and it blew up on social media, like I said, of course. And the story has completely gone viral. Brad has actually been contacted by friends and strangers from Canada, the Philippines, Ireland, Netherlands, South Africa, and dozens of new customers that visited the shop in show of support. And so a lot of them asked how they could help. This is when Brad decided to start a GoFundMe page account for Ray Taylor and has actually raised more than $2,000, to which Ray has, of course, shown his overwhelmed with gratitude by the response from people because he's so used to being treated poorly or just completely ignored, seen as invisible by people walking by. Um, At first, he was self-conscious about it because he didn't know how people would react, but now everyone is coming up and talking to him, showing their respect, asking about his story. So I thought I would give a little bit of a background information about uh, Mr. Ray Taylor. So he was actually born and raised not far away from North Park. He lived a modest but comfortable life working in electronics assembly and as a delivery man and handyman but unfortunately in 2007 he invested his savings into a startup company aimed at making fuel efficient towing vehicles but it failed so he has actually been on the streets since 2011 following a series of career and health setbacks that occurred during the recession. His job with San Diego semiconductor firm was outsourced, and then he was unable to find work, completely out of money, and he had no health insurance to pay for his very badly needed knee and hip replacement surgeries. So he made the decision to become homeless. His plan was to qualify for Social Security disability payments and Medicare to cover his surgeries, Since he paid for disability and social security taxes for decades, he thought it was fair to ask the government for some help. So basically to sum it all up, it was a financial decision to become homeless, not a drug, not a drug or alcohol addiction or a moral breakdown, says Ray. 
So things didn't work out as planned for him. And he gets anxious around other people and says that he's been let down too many times to count. So he has developed aversion to homeless shelters, the police, church groups, and government officials. He never got the surgeries. So he doesn't drink, he doesn't do drugs, and he doesn't panhandle, which has been confirmed by Brad. Uh, But Ray stays strong and is very proud of his independence. He has no living family members, and his only possessions are a cane, a pushcart with a broken wheel, some blankets, clothing, and a couple personal items. He gets by with $6.36 in food stamps a day and the occasional gift of a free donut, coffee, tacos, whatever is offered to him that's nearby. Um, So that's a little bit of background about him. And now background about Brad. So he was actually uh, born in South Africa, but he grew up in Canada and moved to San Diego in 2000. Um, He was in technology and software sales. He got into the donut business in 2014 when his buddy asked for his help writing a business plan for a gourmet donut shop, and then they became business partners. So Nomad Donuts is actually known for its ever-revolving variety of globally flavored pastries, like its Philippines-inspired, I'm going to, I'm not going to say this right, Ube Toro Cake Donuts, Mexican Hot Chocolate Cheerio-style crullers, and Cuban-themed Cream Trees Guava Donuts. They sound very interesting. Um, the restaurant also makes in-house Montreal-style vegan bagels, which Brad describes as slightly sweeter, denser, and more flavorful than the New York variety. Uh, when it first opened, Nomad Donuts was in a 670-square-foot space on 30th Street. As sales grew, the business relocated in 2016, and it is now in a 3,200-square-foot location. And he said the homeless community on the univer- by the university is much larger than at the former location he was at. And actually, occasionally, he has had to call the police to escort out some of the customers with meth addictions or mental illness who have become destructive. But, of course, none of these problems have ever uh, been with Ray Taylor. Uh, I guess Ray's presence has also discouraged littering and graffiti along the wall when he sits there on the street. So Brad actually likes it that Ray sits there um, right outside his shop. And now to sum up this story, Ray said that one day his dream is to have an apartment and get the surgeries that he needs so he can become more self-sufficient. Uh, but he said he will be using the GoFundMe money for some gift cards for food and personal needs in the meantime. I just wanted to tell that story because I think it really touches base on, you know, you can't really judge a book by its cover. Uh, Brad really took the time to get to know Ray instead of judging the book by the cover and shooing him away or whatever the case may be. And I think this turned out to be a really wonderful story. It is time for a break, but when we get back, I have a story about an eHarmony match that was a lot more than just love, and a very, very interesting story about sustainable coats. It is a vegan coat, and it is now available. (laughs) So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
are back to GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast. Like promised, I do have a story about an eHarmony match that was a lot more than love, and I mean that. So when two people took to eHarmony to find love, they had no idea what else they would truly find. Um, when Lisa and Dan Summers met, they had no idea how compatible they truly were. So let me rewind a little bit and give a give a little bit of a backstory. So Dan, who is now in his 30s, found out while he was in his 20s that he had a kidney condition. So this is way before he met and fell in love with Lisa online. He said that he knew that there was going to be some trouble later on down the road with his condition and that something was going to have to be done eventually. Uh, Dan needed a transplant, but he was it was very unlikely that he could find a very good match. Uh, but eHarmony didn't just find him his true love eHarmony also found him his match, which doctors said the odds are one in a hundred thousand, which is pretty crazy. So near their home in Auburn, California, the transplant was successfully performed back in August. Lisa's kidney was accepted by Dan's body. So the couple are now getting back to their normal life with their son Jasper, but now they have a whole new appreciation for life. The family are now strong advocators for kidney donation and believe very strongly that the that the sacrifice can go a long way and change people's lives. There are a shortage of donors and people can actually get 10 to 20, sometimes even 30 years with a live donor if the match is really good. So it can really change people's lives. I thought that story was pretty neat because you never know what you're going to find. You know, you found your true love and someone that completely saved your life. I say that is a pretty sweet double whammy. So, you may not believe in Santa Claus, but you are about to believe in Secret Santa. <laughs> um, I'm not kidding. There is a real-life Secret Santa. Of course, he is anonymous, hence the Secret Santa part. But he is a wealthy businessman who travels the world giving $100, $200, $300 to random strangers. Every year, he does this. And so, the bus drivers in Milwaukee were his elves this year. And trust me, you are going to be wanting to be one of his elves one day as well. Usually, Secret Santa uh, finds his targets in thrift stores. But this year was a little bit different. He recruited elves from the Milwaukee County Transit System because he knows the drivers are always doing kind deeds. Uh, whether it's stopping the bus to fetch a pair of lost children's shoes, helping a turtle cross the street, or rescuing a child out wandering alone. It is a real culture of kindness, and I guess this secret Santa has noticed this. Um, so he said, we are going to be on the biggest sleigh we've ever had. And the magic is going to be gold dust flying across the city. And he wasn't kidding. The rest of the day, the five different drivers gave out thousands of dollars uh, worth of $100 bills uh, just to random people on the street, random people on the bus. And of course, the money was greatly appreciated by everyone. It was so, it, And it's so much more than money. And all of these drivers and people that receive the money have said that. They've come forward and talked about it. And they just say that it's unconditional kindness. Uh, the driver said it really affected them as much as the passengers receiving a lot of the money. And the secret Santa wanted to say, if you ever feel down, if you ever feel a little depressed, and you want to solve your problem, go out and do something kind for somebody. Because when you do that, you're uplifting yourself. I think that is so true. Doing something nice for somebody else makes you feel so good. So I can't wait to see what happens next year with this real-life secret Santa. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So as promised, I have a story about how to get your hands on a vegan down sustainable jacket. Yes, you heard that right. You can now get your favorite cozy, warm, puffy winter jacket that's usually goose down, but now it is completely vegan. So these jackets are far more sustainable than the coats hanging in your average clothing store, and they are even fashionable. You might have heard of the company Pangea, which is a sustainable fashion company. Uh, this company has spent over 10 years developing this patent technology as a sustainable, cruelty-free alternative to goose-down insulation. So this is completely crazy. Rather than being stuffed with plastic materials and animal-derived fillings, these flower-down jackets are filled with wild flowers that have been sourced from restoration projects, helping to support butterfly species. How freaking cool is that? 
So this vegan coat is filled with fully biodegradable material. Um, so it's actually insulated and waterproof, but still breathable. So this is a quote from the company. It says, the wild flowers we source are from areas which contribute to habitat restoration. The aerogel is reportedly made out of 85% recycled paper and several other renewable, non-toxic, and biodegradable materials. And this is actually the first, the world's first green aerogel. Um, it cannot be named as an entirely plastic free since the outer layer of the jacket um, and the lining are made out of nylon and polyester. But the company Pangea says all their plastics are made from recycled materials in order to maintain a zero waste production cycle. So that's pretty cool. 10 years to figure out this technology. The regular size coats are currently being sold on their website for $550 each. <laughs> I mean, I guess if it's completely vegan, it must be great quality. You're doing good for the environment. $550 on their website. Now, grab your binoculars if you're one of the lucky people living on the east coast of the United States. So the last full moon of the decade is taking place this week today to be exact well if you're listening to this on december 12th uh and it actually rises at 12 12 so that is 12 12 at 12 12 so december 12th the 12th month obviously and it rises at 12 12 is that freaky i think that is so freaky um stargazers all over the world will be able to catch a glimpse of the moonrise but the full illumination will take place at a less superstitious time than 12-12. <laughs> um, but if you're in the central U.S. time zone, you can still catch the moonrise at 11-12 on December 11th, which makes for a pollen-dromic timestamp. Uh, this moon has been called the Long Night's Moon or the Cold Moon because it occurs in the winter in December, usually proceeds to the start of the winter on the 21st. Of course, meaning that the nights will start getting longer and colder and the moon will sit above the horizon for a longer period of time. So I hope you're listening to this on December 12th so you can plan to grab your binoculars if you can, if you're in the right place, to see the last full moon of the decade. So I'm going to leave you on that note and that is all the great stories that I have for you today. As always, thank you so much for listening to GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like and follow us on social media and leave a five-star review. I already look forward to sharing more great stories with you next time. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows. From the GSMC Podcast Network, from social media news to marketing news, and even even weird news. The GSMC Podcast Network has you covered. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast. 